Hi all, uh, welcome to part 1b of understanding the Lorentz C. In uh, part 1, I discussed the hyperbolic system in general and in part 1b, uh, that was part 1a, in part 1b, I plan to discuss the transmission of the radio waves. Now, uh, please watch the videos in series and make sure that uh, you watch part 1a before you start watching 1b and then only you should move on to parts 2 and 3. So understanding the hyperbolic system and then understanding the transmission of radio waves is essential before you understand how the uh, Lorentz C actually operates. So for those of you uh, who don't know what Lorentz C is, Lorentz C stands for a long range navigation. It's basically Lorentz that stands for long range navigation and this was developed uh, way back in the 1940s. Uh, as a navigation with a chain of uh, transmitters which were operational from about 1943 or something like that. Uh, now in this video I will talk about the radio waves and then in part 2 I will put the hyperbolic system and the transmission of radio waves together uh, and make you understand how it all comes together in the working of the Lorentz C. So this uh, topic is on radio waves because um, all hyperbolic radio navigation systems are based on the principle that uh, radio frequency energy is propagated through space with a finite and known velocity. So a measurement of the difference in the times of arrival of radio signals from two points by a receiver provides an accurate measurement of the difference in the distance of the propagation paths involved. And that is where I said is uh, you must watch the previous part on the hyperbolic system and you will understand how the hyperbola or the shape of the hyperbola can uh, also play an important role here. So by definition, as you know, the, the locus of points with a constant difference in distance from two reference points is a hyperbola and measurement of constant time differences and hence constant distance differences places the receiver on a hyperbolic line of position. Now the reference signals may be transmitted and received by any feasible means, which means it could be sound or radio, but it's the radio frequency energy, which is the only present means which provides accurate long range information. As you can see here, radio signals are like any other waves and can be depicted as cycles or wavelength. Now knowing this uh, will become important as you proceed as to why I mentioned this particular point. Now transmissions ranging from unmodulated continuous waves to short pulses may be used for Lorentz. The basic principle of position determination however remains the same. As you can see here, the red wave, imagine that originating from point A and it moves right and the blue wave originates from point B and moves right as well. But note the opposite cycle. Now imagine these two points A and B to be the two points of the hyperbola and waves are generating from them as they would from the transmitters. Now if you superimpose the blue wave on the red wave, you can see how at points C and D, both waves are at 0 degrees and 180 degrees, but in opposite phases. Now I'll tell you why this is important. Since the readout of hyperbolic navigation systems consist of time difference readings from a particular set of ground stations, means must be provided to convert the time difference reading to geographic positions. And I'll talk about how special charts, tables or computers are utilized to interpret this measured time delays in terms of lines of geographic positions. Charts for general navigation have representative hyperbolic lines corresponding to various time delays from these pair of stations in addition to the ordinary latitude and longitude lines and other navigational data. Now why I'm showing you all this is because the uh, Lorentz C basically works on the uh, time difference in arrival of received signals from any pair of stations. 
and this is used uh, measured using various electronic techniques in the ship's receiver and this is converted to distance differences and hence a hyperbolic lattice of lines of constant time difference used to plot the line of positions obtained. Now Lorentzi is not a continuous wave system and it hence differs from uh, the old systems of Deca and Omega. Here the pulses are transmitted at a specified rate called the pulse repetition rate and transmission from stations are time synchronized using stable atomic oscillators. Now I showed you the transmissions from let's suppose uh, transmitter A and transmitter B. Now what happens is if both the stations such as the master and the slave station they transmit simultaneously on the same frequency then while theoretically a ship anywhere within a Lorraine coverage would be able to receive and time the arrivals of received signals, you will have a few problems with those received signals. Now the problems would be that uh, there could be an ambiguity in the vicinity of the center line which would exist and I'll talk about that in the next video or the receiver may not be able to distinguish between the signals of the master and the slave. Now what happens here then is that uh, a chain consists of a master and two to three or four slaves. Now transmissions consist of low frequency continuous wave signals as you see here. Each station pair say about the master and the slave they produce a hyperbolic line of position. The range of the system is typically about 440 nautical miles by day and 240 nautical miles by night. Now if a master and slave transmit simultaneously then they are known to be in phase. Now I'll show you here how a simultaneous transmission which is in phase transmission differs from when uh, a wave slightly moves forward and how the phase difference or phase discrimination is created. Now if you don't know what phase difference is, phase difference between uh, two waves tells us how much a wave is in front or behind another wave. If I show you through animations you will see how a simultaneous transmission by both the master and slave can create confusion. However, if there is a difference, a time difference between uh, the master and the slave transmission, so that if the master and the slave do not transmit on the same frequency, the receiver would not be able to discern between the incoming signal. So take this, uh, this is what I wanted to show you here. So the frequencies used here are different, but they have a fixed relationship for that particular chain. So these are all part of the same chain that provides the position of the ship. So there's a master and then there could be two, three or four slaves. And you can see here, uh, let me show you and then I'll talk about it. So solid A moving from right and then the plaked blue wave is moving from B. And split second later, both signals have moved out by at least one by four of the wavelength. Now this will allow the receiver signals to be able to be recognized and processed through circuits which are there in the ship's receiver system. So you can see here the phase relationships at each of the three positions although remain the same and the phase difference is zero when they are transmitting simultaneously. So if the simultaneous transmission occurs, then the receiver will be confused. Therefore, there has to be a slight difference in the transmission sequence or the transmission pattern, which also I will show you in the next video on how a difference in the transmission pattern uh, is uh, received by the Lorenzi receiver and how it translates into a position. But uh, the basic theory here I wanted to show you is about the radio waves and the nature of the radio waves and why the master and the slave uh, should not be transmitting together. So you can see here now both the signals have moved out by about half a wavelength. So therefore uh, you can distinguish between the master and the two slaves that are transmitting. So to maintain uh, 
phase synchronization for the transmitted signals of the master and slave and the master may trigger the slave to transmit or the atomic oscillators may be used to transmit at exactly the required instant. So then this is controlled by the master now. So all positions now although seem to indicate zero phase difference at point B the solid wave is measuring zero and the pegged wave is is measuring 180. So although they are in synchronization, there is a slight difference in the transmission which is controlled by the master transmitter uh, so that the receiver on the ship can distinguish between the transmissions and then uh, use the difference in the transmissions uh, to detect the line of positions to make it into or convert it into a difference in the distance and then obtain a line of positions and multiple line of positions also provides the ships with its position. So we we'll move on to uh, part two now uh, where we will show you how the hyperbolic systems and the radio waves or the transmission of the radio waves fall into place into the working of the Lorentz scene.